might find ourselves hoping that things would not change, that we might hold on to particular moments longer or forever. Yet just as God created our bodies to change over time, yes, it was all part of God's plan, God created all things to change. The church, and in our scripture today, the early church, is destined to change. Our response to change will determine whether the changes sprout curses or blessings. Listen now as the early church struggles with change. Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers. Unless you're circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed along with some other believers to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the believers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Some of you might have heard the story of the guy who was out in the wilderness. He was on a prayer walk. He had intentionally chosen a place that was um, far out in the wilderness. It wasn't uncommon for him to, to hike around. Um, he was in the middle of a mountainous sort of area, beautiful and he found himself regularly just holding his hands up in praise and celebration of God's graciousness. And he was uh, constantly thankful of the beauty that surrounded him. And as he walked along, he stumbled and he fell. And he found that he was rolling down an incline and then over a cliff. And as he scrambled for something to grab hold of, he found a branch and he was able to hold on to the branch below him. There was three or four hundred feet of sheer uh, drop and death at the bottom. This might have been a picture. He wasn't a cartoon, but this is um, a picture of where he was. Above him was uh, uh, unable to climb. He started to yell, hello, hello, anybody up there? He kind of knew nobody was up there because he had intentionally chosen the place. He was alone <clears throat> holding on. And he exhausted himself in voice and in energy, um, trying to see if there was anybody out there continuing to scream and yell. And finally, uh, he's feeling his strength wane. His voice is giving. He's been there for a long time. And he says, oh, God, can you help me? And a voice from above says, I can help. And he says, God, is that you? Yes, this is God. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a really bad place. I need help getting out of here, and, um, and, and will, will you help me? Well, sure, I'll help you. Do you love me? Oh, yes, I love you. Do you love my son? Well, yes, I love your son. Do you trust me? Yes. Are there many more questions? And God says, no more questions. Just let go of the brand. Is there anyone else up there? Said. So change for this man is inevitable. Whether or not it'll be a change that will grow his faith or not is a different question. 
Change is inevitable. Growth is an option. And so it was for Sister Bertha better than you. She sat back in the very last pew at her church. And Sister Bertha better than you was known that way by so many people because Sister Bertha better than you um, in conversation would always find a way to give you advice about how you could do better. She could do it better. She knew how to do it better. Maybe you know Sister Bertha better than you, and if they're here in the congregation, don't turn and look at anyone. Um, Sister Bertha better than you is that person that people began to separate themselves from because she just couldn't help but offer her unsolicited advice to help you be better. And years ago, it started to dawn on her that people were separating from her. They would greet her, perhaps, but then they would, would move away. She didn't pay attention to it a great deal, but she found that, that that question was coming up again. Why is it that people don't want to sit with me, she would say. There was something stirring in her change stirs in us so often, it's just inevitable. But growth is an option. For Sister Bertha, better than you, she struggled with, with listening to what it was that was stirring inside of her. Brother Buford Backslider, he sat on the other side of the same church. He knew Bertha, but he didn't approach her much. And In fact, he wasn't around as much as he used to be. He used to be very active even sang in the choir some, but as things began to change in his church, he became, oh, disgruntled a little bit. The choir didn't sing the songs that they used to sing, so he he backed up a little bit from that. And he never did like the new sanctuary that got built. He didn't want that to be built. He liked the old chapel where they used to to meet, and so he kind of backed away from that. And and you could talk to him about several things that changed in his church. And he would lament about those. His posture in all of those changes was to step back and away. Brother Buford Backslider, like so many of us, found that his world was changing. Change is inevitable. But growth in the midst of those changes, particularly growth as people of faith, is, is a choice that we have to make. And so here we are in Acts chapter 15. It's the early church, and the church has been blossoming and flourishing, and primarily the church has moved through Judaism. Jesus and the disciples were all Jews, and it was just that natural thing for them to begin to talk about the resurrected Christ through Jewish circles. But Paul, and to some degree even Peter, preached to non-Jewish people around the Mediterranean area. And they were receiving the Holy Spirit. They were being born again. They were becoming Christians without being Jewish first. And it rubbed some people the wrong way. And so people came down from Judea to Antioch where they were teaching and said, you can't be saved if you're not a Jew first. And yet Paul and Barnabas said, but it's it's happening. The Holy Spirit is moving and it's, it's happening. People are coming to faith in Christ. They went to Jerusalem. They had a powwow. Peter spoke about how The Holy Spirit has come upon those who are not Jewish, bypassing the whole Jewish first idea. It was a controversy that could have split the church. But James, one of the leaders there, called folks together. The whole assembly, I'm reading in verse 12, the whole assembly became silent as they listened to Paul and Barnabas tell about the miraculous signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. When they were finished, James spoke up and said, It is in my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them to just stay away from idle food, from sexual immorality, and from things that are done in the idle temples. Change was coming to the church 
even the early church. And the church had to make that decision that churches have had to make ever since then and always in the future. Are we going to follow where the Spirit moves? Are we going to follow where the Spirit moves? Are we going to get focused on what we like? Like maybe where our chair is in our sanctuary or, or, or other things. Are we going to focus on the things we like? Or are we going to follow where the Spirit moves? Change is inevitable. Growth is an option. And so it was for Jane and John Doe. Jane and John Doe were an average couple. They had an average number of small children in their family, and they had been married an average number of years, 10, maybe 15 years. And once again, Jane found herself <clears throat> with something stirring inside that caused her to ask if the relationship between she and John Doe was just going to always be average, or was there more? And she always had that sense that there was more to their relationship. And so she started the dance that she had started several years back. And she'd say, John, dear, my sense is that our relationship is not everything that it could be, not everything that it should be. It's average, but it seems like it could be more. It's the dance they had danced many times for all of those years. And John's response is to continue the dance. And his version of the dance was to say, Jane, dear, I love you. And I think everything's fine in our relationship. It must be you. Perhaps you need some counseling, honey. And wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? It's that dance that was so familiar and so before Jane at that moment. And she was wondering, is she going to step away and maybe just settle? Settle for things being average, maybe even a little less than average? Or, or would she attempt in some way to, to move toward that difficulty and address it beyond what the dance called for. There was something stirring in her, and change was inevitable. It was coming. Growth was an option she was considering at some level, in some way. And so in John's gospel, there was this gathering with Jesus and the disciples in the upper room that you're familiar with when he takes the Passover Seder. The Passover Seder was a dance that had gone on for thousands of years, and Jesus takes that dance and he changes it. Pretty uncomfortable thing. A lot of stuff going on in that upper room. He washes their feet. He predicts his betrayal. This whole body and blood thing. He lets them know that he's going to die. And he says, in essence, it's to help you, disciples, grow in the midst of change. You can imagine all the change that Jesus realized was about to happen in that upper room. Chapter 14, verse 29. I have told you these things now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Jesus' desire was for the disciples, of course, to grow in the midst of change, not just hold on in the midst of change, not just um, hunker down and hope that change would not settle in on, on them. Jesus taught us a posture in life. And it's a posture, I would say, that has a contrast to it. Um, I'm going to invite you to put your hands on the seat in front of you. And think of uh, being on a roller coaster, life's roller coaster. And this is the bar that holds you in. And as the roller coaster of life is going, how are you going to grip that roller coaster bar? 
uh, or not. The, the posture that Jesus teaches us is what Victoria just did, is to put our arms up. Now, if you don't like roller coasters, the analogy isn't, it, it stops right there. This is just an analogy. So Jesus teaches us to live in this posture, and it is an open posture that doesn't grasp on out of fear or discomfort, but learns over time to trust the one that walks with us in all things. And so sometimes Jesus has to come and literally pry up our fingers and say, I want to remind you that you are loved without condition. I want to remind you of how blessed you are. I want to remind you of the fact that I will not leave you. I want to remind you that I came that you might have life and have it in abundance and you don't have to hold on to the things that are scary in life, the things that um, have brought a blessing but now like something that has died, it just falls away in your hands. This is that posture that Jesus teaches us if we're willing in the midst of all of the changes. Changes will come again and again and again all throughout our lives. And we can hold on for dear life and grouse about it and complain about it and wish that it wasn't, wasn't going to settle in. Or we can allow God to teach us through our Savior to move our hands out like this. I wonder what changes are before you and how much your life feels like a roller coaster now. Not necessarily from a thousand things going on, but just things that are out of control. You know, at a roller coaster, you're not in control. Somebody else is. And it's a difficult thing, I would say. How many of y'all like roller coasters? I asked this at the early. Hmm. How many of y'all despise roller coasters? Oh, I like roller coasters. I don't like to go loop-de-loop uh, on roller coasters, but I, I, I like roller coasters. So I'm going to show you um, two different clips from the same movie. Uh, it's the movie called Parenthood. I think it's 25 years old. It has Steve Martin and Miriam Steenburgen. They play parents of this horde of kids. They have one child who's married and having a baby. And in the midst of the movie, they find out that Miriam is going to have a baby as well. They've already got about four or five younger kids. So Steve Martin's wife and eldest daughter are both going to have a child basically at the same time. Steve thought that he was done with parenting. He's got a three or four year old already and he's upset about it and he's um, uh, just grousing about all the changes that are before him. Miriam is very angry, I guess, at him because he's not welcoming this sort of change. And she's sitting at the dining room table putting something together for the play coming up for the children. He's standing with his back against the wall when grandma comes in and offers a word of wisdom. The, the quality of the picture is not, not very good, but you'll see <clears throat> when Steve Martin um, thanks grandma for her initial comment, it involves roller coasters. Um, uh, it, it, Miriam shoots him that you know, death look that I think is kind of funny, but. Um. So mom has uh, caught the wisdom, dad hasn't caught the wisdom yet. One of the things that grandma's wisdom reminds us of there is that <clears throat> uh, John 10, 10, God uh, blessed us with this abundant life. Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have it in abundance. And that doesn't happen when our hands are gripping 
that roller coaster, hoping that things are going to stop. It comes as we allow God to guide us to open up that posture and live life in a Jesus-like posture. And that abundance comes, and that incredible joy that God has in store for us comes. Um, in this next scene, it follows. They have gone to a play, I believe it's of the Seven Dwarfs, and their daughter of about six or seven years is playing dopey. And um, the youngest boy, who's about three or four, I think, he sees his sister on stage and thinks she's being hurt. He doesn't quite understand that it's a play going on and it's all decked out. And so he gets up from sitting with mom and dad and he runs up there and starts to create chaos taking care of his sister. And of course, Steve Martin and Miriam Steenburgen, and they, they try to stop him and try to keep that from happening and it gets out of control. And then at, you'll hear, it focuses on Steve Martin, you'll hear the clank, 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 clank of the roller coaster. And I would just encourage you to put yourself in that place. Maybe not exactly this thing happens to you, but that roller coaster of, of life is going up that steep incline and it's about to go over. And watch the transition in Steve, uh, Dad, and um, in the midst of all of this. Young child is struggling to remember the lines. There's grandma. A bored little brother, a bored father, and a mama who's enjoying it. And the smallest child. He's running away there. So I would offer to you that this is life in every way and that our lives are like that sometimes when things that we're just not able to control, we're part of, but we're not in charge and things just kind of go chaotic a little bit and a whole lot. And what are you going to do? Are you going to hold on and hope that things go away, get mean or ugly at somebody or even at yourself, or are we going to trust in our Savior and take yet another step when we hear that roller coaster uh, around us to make the, the same transition that you'll see that Steve Martin makes here. Thank you. There's that roller coaster sound. I invite you to put your arms up. Thank you. 
he's finally figured out what she's known. So oftentimes it's members of the body of Christ that help us see something that we haven't seen before, or to make steps that we haven't made before, or to help release a finger that's holding something tightly and preventing us from, from doing this. I'm thinking about what's coming up in, um, in our country. Um, I listen to a radio station that calls it the eating season that's coming up. I'm not sure where that got coined, but Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up. And I think of all the family times that will happen um, and how much family times can be like a roller coaster. Uh, fears and despairs and angst and things are never exactly perfect like we would want them or if we try to make them perfect that <laughs> we put everybody else in hell sometimes in order for things to be perfect. And what an opportunity we have to not grasp on and hold and focus on those fears, but to embrace those changes because change is inevitable. Oops, sorry. Change is inevitable. Growth is an option. So when you're feeling like this one, when you're feeling like um, you don't know the answers, um, you're lost, you're struggling, something is stirring inside of you, I want to invite you to, to ask God's graciousness to help you shift your grasp to a more open response so that the abundance that God has in store for us can be grasped and brought to home. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, you remind us by our very bodies and by so much in our world that change is just normal. And you have blessed us with this incredible opportunity to walk with you, not just in the future, but right now. Your son, he shows us this kingdom way of being, a way of living. We desire that. We desire to be freed from the fears and that cause us to grasp onto things that are fleeting. Guide us this day, encourage us this day, stir us up this day that we might embrace the changes that are before us and that will always be before us and use that as yet another opportunity to walk with you in the midst of all of that, that we might adopt your son's posture more and more. We give you thanks for this opportunity. We give you thanks for your claim upon our lives and particularly this day for your guidance. We ask it all in Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen.